Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Copeland Limited Q1 FY25 conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen to only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star and zero on a touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. And now in the conference, over to Mr. Rishikesh from BNK Securities. Thank you and over to you, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of BNK Securities, I welcome you all to Q1 FI25 earnings conference call of Copran Limited. Hope everyone is in good health and doing well. On behalf of Copran today, we have with us Mr. Surendra Kumani, Executive Vice Chairman, Mr. Ajit Jain, Chief Operating Officer, and Mr. Sanjay Doshi, Group Advisor. I now hand over the call to the management for the opening remark, post which we'll open the session for q &A. Over to you, sir. A very good evening. And a warm welcome to all of you to this investor call for Cobra. I will first give you a brief overview on the quarter one results. The consolidated turnover for the quarter ended June 24 was rupees 139.4 free crores. The corresponding consolidated turnover for June 23 was rupees 117 crores. The consolidated profit for the quarter ended June 24 was rupees 11.10 crores as compared to rupees 2.77 crores for the corresponding quarter. In terms of the business units, the API business, that is the active pharmaceutical ingredient business, had a turnover of rupees 89.83 crores as compared to rupees 73.86 crores in the corresponding quarter of the previous year. We have improved our performance and will continue to improve in the subsequent quarters. Formulations. The turnover of formulations for the quarter ended 30th June 2024 was rupees 49.61 crores as compared to the corresponding quarter ended 30th June 23, which was rupees 43.29 crores. The growth was marginal. As such, the first quarter of the year is historically a lean quarter for our formulations business. We continue to expand our capacities and automate to be cost competitive. Our focus area for formulation development continues with a higher focus on the various APIs which we are now developing and expect to commercialize in the next few months or years, which will lead to integration and make us cost competitive. For example, in the recent few months, we have taken validation batches for new formulations like Riverexiban and Polyflozin Cetagliptin, Metformin, Nusartan, etc. Hello. I am happy to inform you that we have received the environmental clearance from New Delhi to operate the Panoli plant. This is from the Ministry of Environment. We now expect the consent from the GPCD in the next few weeks. We plan to start the trial or the validation batches 
manufacturing in the next couple of months. The vision of the company is to be a global pharmaceutical company, well integrated, with a focus on new products for deregulated markets. Let me give you as an example. We are planning to put up a biofilling line for the penems, which will be a forward integration for the sterile penems like meropenem, doripenem, and adapenem. This will insulate us from the price volatility of penems and also help increase our margins. So I thank all the investors for showing their faith in Cobra and uh, hand over for question answers. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answers session. Anyone who wants to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Our first question is from the line of Pawan Soni from Investment Analyst. Please go ahead. Hello. Hello. Am I on? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Could you please provide the your revenue and market guidance for the current year? Pawan, sir, your voice is being muffled. Can you come closer to your handset and speak? Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm Arjun. Could you please provide your revenue and margin guidance for the current year? We maintain our uh, guidance, which was given uh, in the last uh, on call, which is about 18 to 20 percent of revenue growth and about 100 crores of EBITDA. Okay. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Darshan Zaveri from Kroon Capital. Please go ahead. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, I hope I'm audible. Good evening, sir. Thank you so much for taking my question. So I just wanted to know, sir, you've given the guidance for FY25. So now I think the Panoli plant will start next year, right, sir? So what kind of value addition, you know, in terms of revenue and margins could we see with the onset of Panoli plant? And just wanted to know why are we guiding a bit lower on the margin front? Make like could we do better margins? As far as Parmoli is concerned, uh, we have not uh, <coughs> finalized our plans uh, for next year, so it would be premature for us to say anything on that. Uh, uh, I think probably with next con call, we would be in a better position to give you guidance on Parmoli plant. Etc. Okay, so and so so this one. Want to know with Q1 being the lean quarter, we would also be able to do 13%. And right now, our 100 crore margin guidance is also roughly 13%. So could we see, you know, maybe a surprise on the margins in the positive way? I mean, uh, if you look at EBITDA margins last year, it was about 12%. 
and the current quarter we have achieved is about 13 percent and we are guiding is about 13 percent okay okay sir. i mean given api where sizes keep moving so we want to be i mean uh, equalizing everything and giving you a guidance it may work if prices yeah uh, move forward okay 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 thank you sir and sir what uh, what will be your current capacity utilization capacity utilization as far as uh, api is concerned it's always fully utilized all depends i mean uh, the turnover etc depends on what kind of products we are making and and as far as formulations are concerned i i mean normally we do 75 to 90 crores in a quarter this quarter it was uh, about 50 crores so it's, uh, it's almost like 60 55 percent of capacity Oh, oh, and so, and, uh, so this will come back as the quarter go on, as you say, it will be in the quarter. Right? I'll, I'll give you a little breakup of uh, division-wise uh, margins for this quarter. In formulations, we did, as I said, uh, 39 and a half uh, crores of revenue with EBITDA margin of about 11 percent, which was 17 percent in uh, Q4 and 2.25% in corresponding quarter. Q4 margins were higher because because of the volumes, because Q4 turnover was 90 crores. So operating leverage, because of that, uh, EBITDA margins were about 17%. As far as API is concerned, its uh, revenue is roughly about 90 crores with EBITDA margins of 14.11 which was in March quarter 6.44 and corresponding quarter 7.23. So on consolidated basis, it's, uh, our editor margin at the moment is 13.03. We aspire to be in the range of 14 to 15% in this year and slowly grow up and our uh, aspiration as far as editor margins are concerned over a period of next three, four years is to reach about 20%. Oh, great, great, sir, great, sir. Uh, that helps a lot, sir. Uh, yeah, that's it from my side, sir, currently. Thank you so much. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Our next Thank question you. is from the line of Rohan Patel from Turtle Capital. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just wanted to uh, know that uh, what is your uh, revenue target uh, on the growth terms uh, for next say, three, four years in FY27 or FY28? Can we expect uh, 1200, 1300 crores of top line? Yeah, yeah, I think that's, that's achievable. And that's achievable. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and you said that in next three years you also want to increase your uh, uh, margins to 20%, right? Four to, five, four to five years. Four to five years. Okay. That, that, that's what we are uh, aspiring to do. It. Four or five years, okay. And uh, can we, uh, like, uh, so the Panoli, the plant, we start contributing into our top line as well as bottom line from FY26. If I heard it right. Yeah. I mean, it, it may add a little bit in this uh, this year, but that will be hardly anything. So, yeah. meaningfully, next year onwards, it will uh, contribute to top line. Okay. And, like, if I heard it right, uh, in earlier you mentioned that the production will start it uh, within next three months. Is it right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you will be only having, say, uh, five to six months of operation. No, no. I mean, we are in August, September at the moment. So uh, uh, validation batches and trial runs will go in November and December. So you have about three months. There also, I mean, uh, more of uh, production would be for getting approvals with 
vendors and uh, authorities. Okay. Uh, so, uh, what kind of uh, capacity utilization you are targeting in for FY twenty six for Panama? And what is it like? As I said, we must. Yeah. As I said, we are still in the working for making. Okay. <laughs> so it, it would be uh, premature for us to mention anything on that. We'll have more clarity by uh, next phone call time. Okay. And just if I can understand, uh, with the product mix that you think will work out, what kind of optimum revenue we can generate from Pagoda? And what kind of margin, if you just can? As I said, we have not worked out which products to be manufactured there between, uh, we have to work out a combination of products between Mahad and Bill. So, till that we work out, uh, I won't be able to say much on that. Okay. But if if you can just, you know, help us out. And over a period of two to, two, two to three years, it should uh, give revenue of two to two and eight to three and eight crores. I mean, from Baltak and three. Okay, okay, okay. And will that increase our margin so far? The product that you were made target over there? As I said, the over period we are looking at uh, expanding our margins. So uh, definitely uh, the margins will be better, a bit of margins. Then only overall increase will happen. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Tushar from Yoga Capital. Please go ahead. Hello, am I audible? Yeah. Okay, sir, so I have a few questions on your Panoli plan. Uh, what was the cost for it? It should be a bit uh, pre operating and everything about 50 to 60 crores. 50 to 60 crores. Okay, and. Uh, but when do you think you will be uh, you will get USFP approval for this facility? USFP approval. Yes. It would be three years. It would take you three years to get that approval. I mean, you have to start production, create uh, data, etc. Let me clarify. Initially, we'll be doing validation batches. Those batches will be put on stability for 12 months at least. Then, post that, we will have to make the drug master file. That, that, that whole process will take about 18 months. And after filing the DMF, we trigger the inspection to a customer, give or take one year. So, a, a minimum time I would say would be three years for the US FDA approval of the plant, even if we trigger for one girl. Am I right, Minimum three years. Okay, sir. For UGM. Okay, okay, okay. And so one last question. You mentioned uh, that in four to five years, it's possible for you to achieve 1200 to 1300 crores. That's a, a wonderful goal uh, for you. But I just want to know, like, what are the growth drivers that could help you achieve that uh, turnover? Basically, the therapeutic segments which we are focusing on, the chronic seg segments, cardiology, diabetes, and CNS. So it's in the uh, quite a bit of shift from our dependence earlier on anti-infectives to chronic products. So they will drive the growth. Hello, Tushar, sir. Uh, yes. Uh, can you hear? Oh, yes, I can hear you. Yeah, that, that answers my question. Thank you. Okay, okay. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, a reminder to all participants, you may press star and one to ask questions. Our next question is from the line of Mitesh from Burma Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. This is Mitesh from Burma Capital, by the way. Uh, I have a question on the 1200 to 1300 crore uh, sort of numbers that earlier participants were discussing. 
So uh, when you talk about doubling your revenue in three years time frame, what kind of assumptions go into it uh, uh, under our various segments? So uh, APIs uh, formulations, for example, uh, what kind of growth do you see in these individually? And also since you are working on KSM uh, as well, we so want to understand if these will be for outside sales or uh, uh, in-house consumption. And uh, if in-house consumption, then what percentage of APIs do you expect to be backward integrated completely? Sir, firstly, let me clarify. As of now, we don't intend to sell any KSMs which we will make. Whatever we make will be for our own consumption. The development and commercialization of QSMs will take some time, but it will make us competitive and help our growth. It will also reduce our dependence on China, which is a volatile market. So that is where, as far as QSMs are concerned. Regarding growth of APIs and formulations, I would put it that both are in the range of 15% plus minus. API would be more because of Manoli, but then when it, if you talk about uh, revenue is booked in the books, in the next three years, a lot of the APIs may go into the formulations in our integration. So it depends on how you look at it, production versus sales. So if I did you say 15% kind of growth for API and formulation, uh, I assume this for FY25, I was asking more from a three year point of view, uh, because uh, control level you are guiding for doubling of profit structure. Let's say uh, this year it's like 18% uh, around, next year you'll have a higher growth in API, because of Panoli starting, so next year, uh, next year and year after that, uh, if I say in two years we achieve about 200 crores turnover from Panoli, which is roughly about 30% uh, of today's consolidated turnover. So that would be apart from our normal growth. So API, API would uh, grow uh, next year by about 30-35% and again 35% in year after that. And how about formulation for FY26 and 27? I think uh, we are assuming about 15% kind of, 10 to 15% kind of growth in formulation. Got it. So the second question I have is on the kind of uh, competitive uh, uh, strength that we have in some of the newer chronic therapies. <laughs> I understand uh, traditionally our strengths have been in anti-infective. So as you foray into these newer molecules, are there any <laughs> certain uh, set of chemistries uh, or certain other capabilities that give you the right to win and then uh, so basically want to understand your rationale to foray into it because uh, even though these are chronic therapies with slightly higher margin the markets are still competitive so what what gives you the assurance to do well uh, in the newer category uh, sir this is a strategic decision based on various factors firstly the chronic therapy within which Cardiac diabetes, diabetes and CNS are the highest growth. Now within these therapies, we have selected the newer molecules which have just gone off patent or are going to go off patent in the next two, three, four years. Even in the CNS segment, we have selected molecules, some of which may go off patent in 2013. So these are all futuristic molecules. Why we will be uh, why we have chosen to be in these molecules in terms of competition? Well, in some cases we are planning to make the KSM and also to the forward integration of making the formulations. So that will give us a slight edge over the other competitors. But the fact remains that there is no pharmaceutical product. When you talk about this, there, there is a monopoly unless it is under patent. 
जो कॉम्पिटिशन मिल गई Second thing is, it gives us value addition of formulations 
because uh, uh, we would be selling it as a formulation, so that value addition will also increase. And there would be stability of ma uh, market for us in terms of volumes. Okay. Um, so my next question would be, uh, like, as much as I understand, cardiac segment, like overall industry data shows that the cardiac segment is facing a lot of competition in the recent time and margins are shrinking. Uh, we see that volume growth has seen some reduction. So how do you think we'll be able to succeed with new launches and, you know, how do we weather through these competitions? Uh, and what you are referring to is the domestic market for formulations. Uh, fortunately, we are only in the export market. We don't do any domestic sales of formulations. And uh, the market is huge. We are comparatively one of the players uh, who do not control the market, but who are not affected also. Okay. Um, and so what are our specific plans for the next two to three years? If you can just give me a ball mark figure. Our biggest capex plan is just now finishing, which is Penoli, which we mentioned is between 50 to 60 crores. Then we will be adding the iron filling line project, which would be maybe another 30 crores or so, or maybe more. And we are still at the stage whether to decide whether to decide whether we do two lines or one line. So that is under finalization. And there is a continuous capex of upgradation of plant in terms of uh, automation and increase in capacity. So over the next three years, you could see a capex of a little more than 100 crores. Okay. And uh, so as we plan to backward integrate our facilities, uh, how much do you think that will reduce our dependency on China, like 1 to 65? Uh, how much dependency should reduce? I cannot often give you a percentage, but gradually... Any I don't have a percentage, but as I said, gradually and definitely, the entire Indian pharma industry, thanks to the support of the government, will be gradually reducing the imports from China. You may be aware that the government came out with a PLI scheme for various products. The projects are still under installation. So it may take five years, seven years, I cannot make an exact guess. But just as we are also planning to take some CSMs, everybody is planning. And there are many independent manufacturers coming up to manufacture the key model materials in India, even though they don't make the API. So this is happening definitely. But over a period of time. Okay, okay that's also my answer. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, a reminder to all participants, you may press star and one to ask questions. Our next question is from the line of Mitesh from Verma Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, thanks again. Uh, uh, so my question is, what is your product concentration and customer concentration uh, of top five molecules and customers respectively. In uh, which category you are saying? The formulation or the uh, Basically, molecule-wise, uh, customer concentration uh, you can share uh, separately. So I understand meropenem is 20% of your sales. And ethanol is roughly 14-15% of your sales. Uh, likewise, the remaining three molecules would be, uh, would they add up to another 20-25 or percent? Uh, other three molecules will add up to about 15 to 18 percent. So basically, top five is roughly 50 to 55 percent. And what would be, uh, what would this be in terms of customer concentration for? Top five APIs and top five formulations. So my luck first. So there is no. Uh, I mean, these are not like uh, with one customer or two customers. Okay. Got it. Uh, uh, Nepal, uh, India, we are selling to every player. Hmm. So there is no customer concentration as far as policy is concerned. And among these uh, top products, top five or at least the meropenem and ethanol, uh, do you see the market be stable in terms of demand?
demand requirement and competition and pricing as well or is there any uh, any risk of uh, too many competitors entering uh, uh, like we we have seen recently in some of the big uh, molecules so how do you see the entire competitive dynamics playing out in this uh, sir, as far as Amazon is concerned, uh, there are no more new players which are coming in, and uh, the last player ex exiting is uh, Teva, who is going to work with us. So, at all, there is no new competition, we expect. Meru Panam is one of the products of the Panam family, and Panam is a fourth generation antibiotic, and there are newer Panams which will come also in the next five, seven years. So there will be players, some may enter, some may exit also. It depends on the size of the player and his competitiveness. And that is one of the reasons that we want to forward integrate and also maybe backward integrate into new course so that we continue to be competitive and be part of the growing pedal market. The pedal market overall is growing, especially in the third world. For it. And sir, in, in terms of our global positioning in both these molecules, uh, what would be our scale compared to, let's say, some of uh, uh, the largest players in both of these? In terms of ethanol, we are the second largest in the world. EPCA is the largest. And uh, so that's the situation, and we don't see any, anybody else new coming in. Yes. And as far as Marathanam is concerned, uh, in India there are four five players. I mean, if you look at larger companies, Orlando is there. Then uh, Vaisan Antibiotic or Australia India and some pharma, but they are not big in uh, the market. And Glen Pharma. At the moment, we have a higher share. In Marathon Penal Business for the last six months. Uh, and uh, the market is growing as far as Marathon is concerned in India. Thank you, sir. I'll again come back in. Thank you. If there are no further questions from the man participants, I now end the conference over to the management for closing comments. I would just like to thank all the investors and those specifically who have asked questions because that shows their interest in the company and its future. And uh, we can commit to see that we grow and uh, ensure that we live up to the image, that we, live up, we live up to the expectations of our investors. Thank you so much. Hello, sir. There is one question from Rohan. Should I take? Yes, please. Okay. Next question is from the Rohan Patel from Total Capital. Uh, thanks for the follow-up question. Uh, last call, uh, you mentioned that uh, you know that your commercial orders will be starting from uh, ethanol in US. If I'm right. Ethanol. Yeah, ethanol. Yeah. And you were planning to supply somewhat 60 to 70 percent of these requirements for one of the large MEC. So can you just um, explain like what's happening over there? Any progress over there? And what kind of product that is? So this we were referring to, I think we clarified last time. So it to one of the largest users of uh, ethanol, which is Teva. Teva is one of the big generic companies in the world, they were manufacturing the earlier, which they are stopping now, and uh, we have supplied some material, they have taken the validation badges, and they are uh, waiting for their uh, permission for the change of uh, vendor. Uh, they have already placed some orders with us, and gradually over the next uh, six months to one year, we expect uh, uh, the complete business to be rooted to Cobra. And uh, can you just give us the idea, like what, how big that business could be for us? It's around 25, 30 times. Okay. Uh, Twenty-five to thirty times, if I get right. 
On behalf of Copan Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you. Thank you.